tectonic processes shape the face of our planet. From towering mountain ranges to deep ocean trenches and violent volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. But what's the science behind these dramatic changes? In this video, we explore topic one of the tectonics cluster, the plate tectonic theory. We'll unpack how Earth's structure drives the movement of tectonic plates, examine the evidence supporting this theory, and investigate the resultant landforms and hazards. Are you ready? Let's begin by asking ourselves, what is the plate tectonic theory? The plate tectonic theory explains how Earth's outer shell is divided into several large, rigid plates that move relative to one another. These plates are constantly in motion, driven by forces within the Earth's interior. To understand this movement, we must first explore Earth's internal structure in greater depth. The Earth is composed of three main layers, the core, the mantle, and the crust. At the center, the inner core is solid and extremely hot, surrounded by the outer core, which is liquid. This core generates immense heat, much of which drives the dynamic processes in the layers above. Surrounding the core is the mantle, a layer of semi-solid rock that extends almost 3,000 kilometers thick. The upper portion of the mantle, together with the Earth's crust, forms the lithosphere, a rigid, brittle shell that is divided into tectonic plates. Beneath the lithosphere lies the asthenosphere, a more ductile and semi-solid layer of the mantle, where temperatures and pressure allow molten rock to flow slowly. The heat from the core causes the mantle material to circulate within the Earth's mantle. Much like the convection currents you might observe in a heated beaker of liquid during a science experiment, these slow but powerful flows of mantle material are responsible for the movement of the tectonic plates above. What's most interesting is that the movements of tectonic plates are not random. They are primarily driven by two powerful forces beneath the Earth's surface, namely convection currents and slab pull force. The heat from the Earth's core generates convection currents within the mantle, especially in the asthenosphere, where semi-solid rock flows more easily. As the mantle material gets heated up, they become less dense and rise towards the lithosphere. At this juncture, it spreads out beneath the tectonic plates, dragging the overlying plates along, which facilitates the process of plate divergence. As these mantle material get further away from the Earth's core, they gradually cool, become denser, and sink back down again. This forms a convection current cell. Within the Earth's mantle, there are multiple convection current cells. The downward moving portion of two adjacent convection currents will drag the overlying plates along, facilitating the process of plate convergence. At the convergent plate boundary, another major driver known as slab pull force comes into play. Specifically, where an oceanic plate converges with another plate, the oceanic plate will subduct into the mantle due to its higher density. During its descend, gravity helps pull the rest of the plate along with it. Think of it like a heavy blanket slipping off the edge of a bed. The heavier the falling portion, the more forcefully it drags the rest along. This force is known as the slab pull force, and it is especially important in driving plate motion over large distances. Together, the presence of convection currents and slab pull force explain not just why tectonic plates are in constant motion, but also why this movement shapes the Earth in such dynamic and powerful ways, from rift valleys and volcanoes to earthquakes and mountain ranges. Understanding them helps us make sense of the dramatic and sometimes hazardous events that occur at Earth's surface. Now that we understand the fundamental theory of plate tectonics, let's ask the pivotal question of, what evidence did scientists use to support the plate tectonic theory? And how do we know it's valid? One of the most compelling pieces of evidence is seafloor spreading. At mid-oceanic ridges found at oceanic-oceanic divergent plate boundaries, magma from the mantle rises through the cracks and fissures between the diverging plates. As it reaches the seafloor, the magma cools and solidifies to form new oceanic crust. As more magma emerges and hardens over time, it pushes the older crust outward, gradually widening the ocean floor. This is how mid-ocean ridges grow and how new lithosphere is continuously formed. Geologists have confirmed this process by studying the age of oceanic rocks. Rocks located closest to mid-ocean ridges are youngest, while those farther away are significantly older. This clear pattern of age supports the idea that new crust is created at the ridge and then pushed away symmetrically. 
Another powerful line of evidence comes from magnetic striping. As the iron-rich lava at mid-ocean ridges cools and solidifies, the magnetic minerals within it align with the Earth's magnetic field at the time of formation. However, Earth's magnetic field has reversed polarity many times throughout geological history, meaning magnetic north and south have switched places. As a result, scientists discovered alternating bands of normal and reversed magnetic polarity on both sides of mid-ocean ridges. These bands form symmetrical, zebra-like patterns, confirming that crust has been added evenly and continuously to both sides of the ridge over time. Together, the patterns of seafloor spreading and magnetic striping provide rock-solid physical evidence that tectonic plates are moving, exactly as the plate tectonic theory predicts. They show us that the seafloor is not static, but is a dynamic zone of constant renewal and recycling. When tectonic plates move, they interact in different ways depending on their direction and the type of crust involved. These interactions create distinct boundaries, namely divergent, convergent, and transform, each with its own set of processes and landforms. Let's explore what happens at each boundary type and the powerful geological features that result. Firstly, we have the divergent plate boundaries where plate move away from each other. At divergent boundaries, the divergence of plates exert tensional forces. This movement reduces pressure on the underlying mantle, allowing magma to rise through the cracks and fissures. When this magma reaches the surface, it cools and solidifies to form new crust, making divergent boundaries key zones of crustal formation. There are two types of divergent plate boundaries. First, we have oceanic-oceanic divergent plate boundary. At places like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the Atlantic Ocean, oceanic plates are pulled apart. Magma continuously emerges and hardens, forming underwater mountain chains known as mid-oceanic ridges. Over time, this creates new seafloor and can give rise to submarine volcanoes or volcanic islands, such as Surtsey in Iceland. Second, we have continental-continental divergent plate boundary. When two continental plates diverge, the crust stretches and thins. Over time, vertical fault lines begin to form, and blocks of landmass will subside along these fault lines. The linear depression formed through this process is known as a rift valley. The East African Rift Valley is a prime example, where faulting and volcanic activity create deep valleys and high volcanic peaks like Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. These areas also experience shallow earthquakes due to fault movement. Next, we have the convergent plate boundaries, where plates move towards each other. There are three types of convergent plate boundaries. First, the oceanic-oceanic convergent plate boundary. When two oceanic plates collide, the denser one subducts beneath the other, forming deep oceanic trenches such as the Mariana Trench. Second, the continental-continental convergent plate boundary. When two continental plates converge, subduction is resisted because both plates are light and buoyant. Instead, the edges of the crust buckles and folds to form large fold mountain ranges like the Himalayas. This process also causes intense seismic activity. Third, the oceanic continental convergent plate boundary. When an oceanic plate converges with a continental plate, the denser oceanic plate subducts beneath the continental plate. At the point of subduction, a long linear depression known as the oceanic trench is formed. As part of the subducting oceanic plate melts, magma rises through the cracks and fissures of the overlying continental crust to form volcanoes. In addition, as the continental plate is light and buoyant, the edges of the crust buckles and folds to form large fold mountain ranges. For example, when the oceanic Nazca plate subducts under the continental South American plate, this process creates the Peru-Chile Trench, volcanoes such as Nevado del Ruiz, and fold mountain ranges such as Andes Mountains. Lastly, we have the transform plate boundaries where plates slide past each other. This lateral movement causes the formation of fault lines while creating intense friction. When the built-up stress is suddenly released, it triggers earthquakes. These boundaries don't create or destroy crust, but they are among the most seismically active areas on Earth. The San Andreas Fault in California is one of the best known transform boundaries. Here, the Pacific Plate moves northwest past the North American Plate, Sudden slips along this fault line have caused significant earthquakes that pose a continual risk to the region. So, there you have it! Understanding tectonic processes helps us explain the distribution of earthquakes, volcanoes, and mountain ranges. It also informs how we build cities, prepare for disasters, and manage resources.
Plate tectonics isn't just a theory, it is a foundation for how we understand Earth as a dynamic, ever-changing planet. If you found this video insightful, feel free to visit that geographyteacher.com to access resources such as learning guides, suggested answers to past year papers, link to a customized AI learning tool, and exam strategies tailored to the Singapore syllabus. Additionally, do subscribe and turn on notifications for more geography deep dives of the various cluster content. Have fun learning and see you in the next video.